In economics, comparative statics is the comparison of two different economic outcomes, before and after a change in some underlying exogenous parameter. As a study of statics it compares two different equilibrium states, after the process of adjustment. It does not study the motion towards the equilibrium, nor the process of the change itself. Comparative statics is commonly used to study changes in supply and demand when analyzing a single market, and to study changes in monetary or fiscal policy when analyzing the whole economy. The term, comparative statics itself is more commonly used in relation to microeconomics than to macroeconomics. Comparative statics was formalized by John R. Hicks and Paul A. Samuelson but was presented graphically from at least the 1870s. For models of stable equilibrium rates of change, such as the neoclassical growth model, comparative dynamics is the counterpart of comparative statics. Linear approximation Comparative statics results are usually derived by using the implicit function theorem to calculate a linear approximation to the system of equations that defines the equilibrium, under the assumption that the equilibrium is stable. That is, if we consider a sufficiently small change in some exogenous parameter, we can calculate how each endogenous variable changes using only the first derivatives of the terms that appear in the equilibrium equations. For example, suppose the equilibrium value of some endogenous variable is determined by the following equation, where is an exogenous parameter. Then, to a first-order approximation, the change in caused by a small change in must satisfy, here and represent the changes in and respectively, while and are the partial derivatives of with respect to and respectively. Equivalently, we can write the change in as Dividing through the last equation by da gives the comparative static derivative of x with respect to a, also called the multiplier of a on x. Many equations and unknowns All the equations above remain true in the case of a system of equations in unknowns. In other words, suppose represents a system of equations involving the vector of unknowns and the vector of given parameters. If we make a sufficiently small change in the parameters, then the resulting changes in the endogenous variables can be approximated arbitrarily well by, in this case, represents the times matrix of partial derivatives of the functions with respect to the variables and represents the times matrix of partial derivatives of the functions with respect to the parameters. Note that if one wants just the comparative static effect of one exogenous variable on one endogenous variable, Kramer's rule can be used on the totally differentiated system of equations. Stability The assumption that the equilibrium is stable matters for two reasons. First, if the equilibrium were unstable, a small parameter change might cause a large jump in the value of, invalidating the use of a linear approximation. Moreover, Paul A. Samuelson's correspondence principle states that stability of equilibrium has qualitative implications about the comparative static effects. In other words, knowing that the equilibrium is stable may help us predict whether each of the coefficients in the vector is positive or negative. Specifically, one of the n necessary and jointly sufficient conditions for stability is that the determinant of the n times n matrix B have a particular sign, since this determinant appears as the denominator in the expression for the sign of the determinant influences the signs of all the elements of the vector of comparative static effects. An example of the role of the stability assumption suppose that the quantities demanded and supplied of a product are determined by the following equations, where is the quantity demanded, is the quantity supplied, P is the price. A and C are intercept parameters determined by exogenous influences on demand and supply respectively. B less than zero is the reciprocal of the slope of the demand curve, and G is the reciprocal of the slope of the supply curve. G greater than zero if the supply curve is upward sloped, G equals zero if the supply curve is vertical, and G less than zero if the supply curve is backward bending. If we equate quantity supplied with quantity demanded to find the equilibrium price, 
Which of these possibilities is relevant? In fact, starting from an initial static equilibrium and then changing a the new equilibrium is relevant only if the market actually goes to that new equilibrium. Suppose that price adjustments in the market occur according to where greater than zero is the speed of adjustment parameter and is the time derivative of the price, that is, it denotes how fast and in what direction the price changes. By stability theory, P will converge to its equilibrium value if and only if the derivative is negative. This derivative is given by this as negative if and only if G be greater than zero, in which case the demand intercept parameter positively influences the price. So we can say that while the direction of effect of the demand intercept on the equilibrium price is ambiguous when all we know is that the reciprocal of the supply curve slope G is negative. In the only relevant case an increase in the demand intercept increases the price. Note that this case, with G, B greater than zero, is a case in which the supply curve, if negatively sloped, is steeper than the demand curve. Comparative statics without constraints. Suppose as a smooth and strictly concave objective function where x is a vector of n endogenous variables and q is a vector of m exogenous parameters. Consider the unconstrained optimization problem. Let the n by n matrix of first partial derivatives of with respect to its first n arguments x1, xn. The maximizer is defined by the n times 1 first order condition. Comparative statics asks how this maximizer changes in response to changes in the m parameters. The aim is to find the strict concavity of the objective function implies that the Jacobian of f, which is exactly the matrix of second partial derivatives of p with respect to the endogenous variables, is non-singular. By the implicit function theorem, then, may be viewed locally as a continuously differentiable function, and the local responsive to small changes in Q is given by applying the chain rule and first order condition. Application for profit maximization Suppose a firm produces N goods in quantities. The firm's profit is a function P of an of M exogenous parameters which may represent, for instance, various tax rates. Provided the profit function satisfies the smoothness and concavity requirements, the comparative statics method above describes the changes in the firm's profit due to small changes in the tax rates. Comparative statics with constraints. A generalization of the above method allows the optimization problem to include a set of constraints. This leads to the general envelope theorem. Applications include determining changes in Marshall and demand in response to changes in price or wage, limitations and extensions. One limitation of comparative statics using the implicit function theorem is that results are valid only in a neighborhood of the optimum, that is, only for very small changes in the exogenous variables. Another limitation is the potentially overly restrictive nature of the assumptions conventionally used to justify comparative statics procedures. Paul Milgram and Chris Shannon pointed out in 1994 that the assumptions conventionally used to justify the use of comparative statics on optimization problems are not actually necessary, specifically, the assumptions of convexity of preferred sets or constraint sets, smoothness of their boundaries, first and second derivative conditions, and linearity of budget sets or objective functions. In fact, sometimes a problem meeting these conditions can be monotonically transformed to give a problem with identical comparative statics but violating some or all of these conditions, hence these conditions are not necessary to justify the comparative statics. Stemming from the article by Milgram and Shannon as well as the results obtained by Vainot and Topkish an important strand of operational research was developed called monotone comparative statics. In particular, this theory concentrates on the comparative statics analysis using only conditions that are independent of order-preserving transformations. The method uses lattice theory and introduces the notions of quasi-supermodularity and the single crossing condition. The wide application of monotone comparative statics to economics include 
production theory, consumer theory, game theory with complete and incomplete information, auction theory, and others.